Yo, what is up guys, Grim here, and in today's video, we're going to be ranking all of the four-star units, as well as going into detail about how you might want to use them on the release of Star Rail. So overall, we're going to be going through every single unit, we're going to be talking about their strengths and weaknesses, but please understand that this is all based on closed beta 3 information, and on release, everything could change. Subscribe to my channel to see what those changes will be right as the game launches, I'm going to have some videos covering that. Now it's also worth noting that all of the stuff here is going to be based around our previous tier list which we ranked all the 5 stars. The 4 stars are going to be in direct competition with the 5 stars and it's a really good way to gauge their power. In addition to that, pretty much everything in this video is based on hard numbers. We've done the maths, we've done the calculations, there's tons of spreadsheets and simulations that are behind this. So pretty much we're going to go with an objective approach instead of an opinionated one. But with all that said, all those claims out of the way, let's get straight into it. It's worth noting that pretty much every character above C tier I would recommend building and feeling pretty good about it. And in addition to that, if you guys don't understand what skill point management is about, definitely check out the basics of team building guide as well as the combat guide on my channel and that'll bring you right up to speed. So we're going to be assessing each one of these characters on an individual level. Some people get more powerful, some people get a little weaker in teams, but looking at them on a singular level is a good way to give you guys the best idea of how powerful they are, when you pull them, and if you should level them up. First up, let's cover Dan Hang, your boy who everyone's going to be getting right on release and who is a great unit. So in my opinion, he's a bit of a B tier character here. And we're gonna be going over a few points for each of the characters and we'll cover them right now. So we're gonna be going over the character's output, whether that's healing, buffs, shields, or damage. We're gonna be going over their upkeep, basically how expensive or how profitable they are to run in terms of skill points they provide, as well as the perks they provide. So Dan Hang's output is pretty medium. He's definitely not gonna be doing top of the damage numbers here. Uh, you can see here he's about middle of the pack in terms of the DPS numbers here. Uh, so he's definitely not bad in terms of output, but he's not gonna be breaking anyone's uh, you know damage meter here. Now in terms of upkeep, Dan Heng is a little bit more expensive to run in terms of skill point consumption than other characters, but he does make up for that in the fact that he can take a turn off to use a basic attack and that basic attack will be enhanced, meaning he doesn't have to use his skill every turn to get full, full potential. Uh, you know, you can take a turn off here and there. Dan Heng also has a pretty awkward ultimate cost of 100, uh, unfortunately, his skill generates 30 energy uh, and, you know, his basic generates 20. Uh, so there's not really too many combinations of those numbers there, which you can actually create to create 100 without taking four actions, unfortunately. So if you do 30, 30, 30, that's 90, that's not 100. If you do uh, 20, 30, 30, that's 80, not 100. You know, so you have to take four actions and that's really going to hurt him, which means he really wants some form of energy regeneration or he wants to kill a unit or be hit in battle. Uh, and that is another reason why he goes down at tier. He's not in A tier because of that problem. Uh, if he could solve that problem somehow, you know, he'd be a lot better. Uh, but right now, there's not too many tools in the game which are damage positive to solve that problem. So Dan Hang is, you know, a little bit down here. Uh, but in terms of perks, he does have a few. He has a slow, which is phenomenal on single target fights and boss fights. You're definitely going to have that up 100% of the time. So that's great. And it also stacks very favorably with stuff like Welt. You could double those slows up and really get a lot of value there. In addition to that, Dan Hang also gains a ton of wind penetration if you utilize his talent correctly. Now, this can be exceptionally powerful uh, to a free-to-play player who will not have a vast roster of different elemental carries. Uh, so you can use Dan Hang in quite a lot of situations where the enemy is not even vulnerable to wind. So he is a free-to-play player's best friend, uh, and he will carry you quite hard as a solo carry, uh, you know, kind of in your teams. Definitely a very good unit but just definitely not an A tier unit, definitely a B, uh, but pretty strong. Hook is up next. Hook is similar to Dan Hang, a fantastic free to play option and carry uh, who is very, very good. So in terms of output, Hook actually is a little bit better in terms of the output in terms of Dan Hang. Uh, you can see that she's quite up there in terms of damage. She does perform quite well, and she also has an AoE component, meaning she's going to be a little bit stronger in AoE scenarios. Uh, that you can see that she's you know, getting a bit of damage extra there as well. So pretty exceptional. Now, in terms of output, she's definitely still B tier. She's not going to be beating anyone like Clara when it comes to output uh, in terms of like really, really well-built teams, uh, but she's definitely pretty good. And in the early game, she's going to be a phenomenal breaker uh, because she gets to use a few more actions than is normal uh, with many, many units because she gets advanced action forward from one of her traces. In addition to that, she's got a low ultimate cost and she also gets energy from her talent, uh, which overall means she's going to be getting a lot of ults, advancing those actions, and she's going to be taking quite a few extra 
extra turns in a long drawn out fight, uh, which can be quite nice for breaking units. Definitely not as good as some of the other units on this list, but we'll talk about that in a second here. In terms of upkeep, she's a bit more expensive than average. I think she uses eight skill points over seven turns, similar to Dan Hang. So she's not a cheap unit to run, uh, but she's certainly not bad. In terms of perks, she does bring a burn to the table. Now, burn is pretty powerful as it enables some units like Himiko to do more damage, uh, as well as Pella to get a lot more benefit from her rotation as well. So pairing a team of Hook as the main carry with a support as Pella uh, would definitely give you extra benefit there uh, compared to some other units. Dan Hang also has something similar with his slow, uh, but Hook's burn, I think he's going to be a little bit more universal uh, in terms of some of the units coming down the line, namely Kafka, as well as a few other damage dealers DOT kind of focused units. So definitely Hook has a bit of potential there, but she's still in B tier and she doesn't provide enough benefit uh, for what we're kind of looking for and doesn't have insane damage, but she's definitely a good unit. All right, next up, uh, let's cover Herder. Oh boy. Herder, unfortunately, the reason she ends up in D tier is purely on output alone. Her AoE damage as an erudition character is quite low when you compare it to other erudition characters here. Uh, and then when you get into her single target, it is an absolute disaster. Now, an interesting talking point here is that Herder actually was one of the strongest units in the game in close beta 2. Uh, but her numbers got absolutely slashed because she was too powerful uh, in close beta 3. And that is why she's easily where she is. I think she just got over nerfed and she's just a little bit down there in terms of the DPS numbers right now. Hopefully she gets buffed for release and we can see her return to glory. Uh, but you know, the Kuru Kuru or Time to Twirl is in D tier. She doesn't have really any perks that she brings to the table. She doesn't cost too much to run in terms of skill points. Uh, but you know, we're not really looking at anything here and no reason to bring her up. There's pretty much an alternative for every scenario other than her. Uh, even as a free to play player, uh, you're better off using pretty much any unit other than her, unfortunately. Hopefully, she gets buffed. All right, next up, let's talk a little bit about Sampo. So Sampo is another B tier unit, but it could easily move into A tier as we learn and develop strategies more. Sampo is a phenomenal unit uh, as he actually does reasonable damage, uh, you know, not too bad there, um, but he really does good AOE damage, which is pretty cool. Very high AOE damage for a nihility nih um, kind of unit there. But in addition to that, Sampo also provides a lot of benefit in terms of breaking enemy break bars. He has one of the highest amount of break potential of most of the characters on this list as his skill multi-hits targets. Now this can work a little bit against you in large AoE fights uh, where there is many targets who are not wind and like a few priority ones which are uh, but overall I think it's going to be a plus in his favor uh, and I really do think that units like Sampo have a lot of value early on when breaking is far far more important and in the end game if there is ever really high priority targets to break because they have some crazy ability uh, Sampo is going to be a pretty good breaker for that reason. Now, in addition to that, he's obviously got great output, you know, reasonable for his role, uh, and he's also not going to be too expensive to run. In fact, he is one of the only characters on this list which I would actually recommend running as what we call a neutral unit. So everyone on this DPS list here uh, is considered to be spamming their skill every turn, and they are basically going to be simulated as the main carry of your team. Essentially, you will generate skill points and feed them all to this character where they spam their skill. Now, Sampo is a unique character in that most of his damage, when we actually come here, actually comes from dots. Uh, and what that means, essentially 65.6% .6 of his damage from dots there, is that that damage persists if he's not even using his skill. Uh, so what you would essentially have with Sampo is you would ramp up the dots on all the targets, uh, and then you would switch over to using your basic attack, uh, which costs no skill points, but actually generates them. And then you would just maintain those damage dots, uh, which is gonna be giving most of his damage, uh, and then all the rest of the skill points can be going to heals, taunts, support, damage on someone else. And you know, that overall is gonna make him a very good unit and a very good neutral unit, which there is very few of them in the game. So I could definitely see him moving up to A tier if we can figure him out a little bit more. Uh, but you know, overall right now, B tier. Now, another neutral unit or free unit is Arlen. Now, what's cool about Arlen is he does some pretty good damage in terms of single target. Uh, when we come down over here and take a look at single target here, uh, we will take a look and see here that Arlen actually does provide quite a bit of single target damage here. Uh, he's just below Dan Hang, but he's nothing, nothing crazy right now. Nothing crazy right now, right? So why are you putting him in A tier? Why is he the first four star in A tier? Well, that's because his skill consumes no skill points. And as we just discussed, that gives you more skill points for your main damage dealer, like a Sele, uh, like, uh, like a like a Sushang, or like someone who wants all those skill points for themselves. 
Now, what's cool about that though, uh, is that, you know, while he's not doing any, uh, you know, skill point consumption, he's still doing big damage, respectable damage. Now, one thing, the reason that Ireland always ends up over here or D tier in a lot of people's lists is that they think that his talent is incredibly restrictive. If you guys didn't know, Ireland's talent requires him to be on low life to deal a lot of bonus damage. Now, what's cool about Ireland though, is that you can completely ignore that and you can just use him as a unit which has no skill point costs and heal him up to full. And what's cool is that's what this damage number is. The way I simulated Ireland is I simulated him at full life for the full portion of his rotation. So this is the worst case scenario for Ireland. This is the lowest damage you'll be dealing with him. If he's at 100% life and he gets topped up every single turn after using his skill, well, that's just how much damage he'll deal. So he's competitive with Dan Hang even in the worst case scenario, which means he's basically a Dan Hang who consumes no skill points. Now he does consume life, so you will have to be careful of that and you will have to heal him, but you'll have plenty of skill points left over because your main character isn't consuming any. He also has phenomenal synergies with Bronya as well as Teen Young, and he is actually one of the top units in closed beta 3 uh, in terms of end game forgotten hall clearing. Uh, the Chinese realm love Arlen and they use him in a ton of hyper carry teams, which are essentially teams which focus two or even three buffers all on one unit. And the reason they can do that and the reason they do do that is because he has no skill point requirement. So there is plenty of points left over for making the rest of the team work. Arlen is a solid A tier and you could you could potentially make an argument for him to be S tier uh, but I'm not going to do that because I think that there is better units in terms of overall power of compositions. All right, next up, uh, let's cover a, a massive one here, Su Shang, another A tier character. Whoa, okay, they're gonna have to be pretty damn good to be as good as Arlen, though, right? Well, Su Shang is actually essentially the polar opposite of Arlen. She is the most expensive character to run. But first and foremost, let's cover her damage output here. So Su Shang uh, on single target is the third highest. Now, what's interesting about Su Shang is that this simulation here, which gives you the damage number, uh, is a pretty conservative one for Su Shang. Uh, if you you do create the optimal situation for Su Shang in which she is able to truly shine. Uh, she can be um, a lot higher in terms of the potential here and then even what we're seeing here, which is quite exciting in my opinion. So overall, uh, Su Shang has excellent damage, some of the highest, and she is probably the best free to play carry that you're gonna be able to get your hands on at launch if nothing changes. It's essentially like getting a free Yang Ching uh, or even a Sele. And in my opinion, uh, you know, as you can see here on my list, I actually rank her above Su Shang. Now it's true that Yang Ching is the highest simulated damage unit in teams. Uh, he does phenomenal damage when you support him correctly uh, and when you build the perfect team around him if you can make sure he'll never get hit. But Su Shang does modest and moderately powerful damage uh, pretty much across the board, is free to play viable, you can get access to her, uh, and she's overall gonna be a pretty fantastic unit. Now, when it comes to her upkeep, that's where she falls a little bit short. Uh, you know, she is very expensive to run, more so than even Sele to run. Sele requires 10 skill points over seven turns. Su Shang, with her full rotation, requires a whopping 12, uh, which is madness. She is very, very hungry. She's very greedy. And if you want to use that skill every single turn to get the most out of her damage, uh, she is going to be very demanding, which means you're going to have to pair her with a neutral unit. Like we talked about earlier, she wants to be paired with someone like Arlen or Sampo who do not want to use skill points as much as other characters. So overall, Su Shang is a fantastic unit. Now, the reason that she's in A tier, uh, despite all these things, you know, she does good damage. Okay, she's very hungry, which is definitely a downside. But why is she in A tier? Well, she actually does so many actions with those ultimates, with those skills, you know, the 12, 12 actions there, including many, many ultimates, uh, is that she's actually gonna be breaking the enemy's break bar far, far more than anyone else. Compared to a slower unit, uh, who gets like seven actions per turn, uh, she's almost doing double the amount of actions. If you factor in her ultimates as well, she pretty much is. So she's going to be breaking the enemy's break bar twice as fast, uh, which is crazy. Uh, and there's also additional benefits that you can stack on top of her from, you know, traces, eidolons, all sorts of stuff like that, uh, which make her even better at doing that. Her whole entire kit is focused on breaking enemies. Uh, and if you can do that, she's going to be phenomenal. So she's basically going to be a free pass on any single physical vulnerable enemy uh, when you get to the Forgotten Hall or in the campaign or any sort of challenging mode. As a free to play player, slap your Sushang in there with break effect and she's going to absolutely rip and tear it to shreds uh, and even in the end game when you build her pure dps with crit crit multi all sorts of stuff like that she is a phenomenal unit there as well and that is why she's in a tier despite being so expensive she's essentially going to be a hyper carry target in the end game and in the early game she's going to be a break damage fiend very very good unit 
All right, next up, uh, we will now cover Serval. So Serval is a solid B tier unit. You can see here, all the units here are really, really good. Uh, they're fantastic and they're super strong as free to play, uh, but they just don't have anything special which really makes them tick, which makes them shine. Now, Serval is very similar to Sampo in that she is a damage over time character. So you can go down that neutral route with Serval. Uh, and if you actually take a look at her damage, uh, you know, single target, it's pretty bad. Uh, but when you do get to the AOE, it is pretty good. So if you're ever in an AOE scenario, uh, you know, you're going to be very, very happy to have Serval on your team. And I do actually recommend leveling her up as a free to play player if you do not have access to Arlen or, you know, another lightning character, because there is a ton of enemies in the early game and the campaign and the first forgotten hall, uh, which require you to have a lightning AOE character, namely it's Farog and his minions. And when they get summoned, you're going to need to have either Serval or someone like Serval. Um, so she's going to be pretty fantastic uh, in terms of a early game but in the late game when we're considering things like that her damage just isn't as competitive as some other characters you can see here it's not bad in aoe but when you get to that single target she really does fall down uh, similar to himiko so she can't be up too high in terms of the damage she doesn't have enough priority single target damage and she also unfortunately is not bringing anything else to the table now in terms of the upkeep though in terms of how many skill points she spends and generates and all sorts of stuff like that well she definitely does have a few perks here she can be run as i mentioned as a neutral unit uh, most of her damage comes from her talent as well as her damage over time you can see here her talent and her shock and her ultimate make up for over half the damage uh, and her skill here um, you know you don't have to use it every single time many characters have a lot of the damage tied to their skill uh, but so far shouldn't be too worried and in aoe it even gets easier to have to not worry about that as much you know you don't have to worry too much about that skill it gets even better for you uh, so she can be played as a neutral unit meaning you know you can go basic skill basic skill basic skill uh, and you know kind of sustain herself and give those skill points to someone else who needs them and she's going to be really great like Sampo in that scenario okay next on the list we have our last damaging character here and that is Ching Yu so Ching Yu is the only quantum free to play character uh you know we don't have a lot of options right now we've got Sally as a five star and she's going to be a pretty hard one to get so she's pretty much our only option here now why did I put her in C tier well and the reason is I have no idea really what she's capable of. She's a unit completely based around chance and luck. There are some very, very interesting ways that people are trying to come up and play her. Um, you know, overall, you can play her in a supporting role. You can play her as a main carry. You can play her as a supporting carry. There's lots of different ways that you can put her and put her around. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, there's nothing that she really does consistently and does well. She also doesn't fit into any of the team building metas that we've seen so far because she is a high variance unit she could be really good she could be really bad you have no idea now this actually does work in her favor though because you can put her in a forgotten hold team and then just spam reset it until you get lucky so her kit essentially revolves around drawing four of the same tile there's three different tile types every single time she gets a turn or an ally gets a turn she draws a tile so you know if you got exceptionally lucky she'd be one of the best dps units for a free to play character uh, but if you got really unlucky or even an average luck she's pretty mediocre uh, based Based on what we can see now keep in mind she could actually end up being a phenomenal unit uh, it's just no one or and myself included has figured her out uh, so similar to Arlen back in his early days I think that she could have potential uh, but I just have no idea where to place her and overall my current feeling on her is C tier so she's the only one on this list who I do not have an objective answer for uh, so she is going to remain there unfortunately all right, now that we've finished with the damage dealers, let's move on to the sustain unit. Oh, we've got one left. Hold on, Trailblazer Physical here. So Trailblazer Physical is a interesting one. They are unfortunately a little bit behind in terms of the AOE damage, in terms of what they can bring. They are primarily an AOE character here. Uh, you know, so they are behind the likes of Serval, Sampo, and um, Himiko in terms of AOE damage. And they're equally as bad, unfortunately, on the single target. You can see here, right down here in terms of the single target here, not great. So they've been balanced as an erudition character or an aoe character you can see clearly by their numbers uh, but they're lower than the other characters here so it wouldn't make sense to put them up here with the b tier now in terms of upkeep they're a pretty cheap unit to run about seven skill points over seven turns so one skill point a turn uh, you know not too bad then uh, but when it comes to perks they don't really offer anything at all apart from being a pretty healthy unit essentially they can heal themselves uh, they can buff themselves somewhat uh, you know but overall it's basically going to be a unit which does okay damage uh, you know, and is going to be able to sustain themselves slightly. 
but it's worse than uh, Hook at doing both of those things. Uh, now, the reason they end up in C tier though and not B tier, which would be reasonable to put it in C, uh, B tier in my opinion, uh, is that they you have to make a choice. You cannot have both physical Trailblazer and Fire Trailblazer. And when we get to Fire Trailblazer here in a second here, you will know why we put physical in C tier. You could honestly even just remove them from this list because I don't think that there's really too many scenarios after you get the Fire Trailblazer that you would use physical Trailblazer unless you specifically do not have a physical unit like Sushang or someone who can break physical and you really, really need it. They are sufficient as a physical damage breaker uh, and in AoE situations with many AoE physical units on the board, uh, they can be pretty good. Uh, but when we get into the end end game where numbers really matter, that's the Chaos Memory and the Forgotten Hall, uh, they're definitely not as powerful, unfortunately. Now, those supporting units, let's talk. All right, Trailblazer Fire, a pure free-to-play option here, and someone who is an absolute monster of a unit here. So Trailblazer Fire is a preservation, sustaining themed character who you will play as a pure support. A pure support that basically spams their basic attack to fuel the rest of the team. When we're talking about Su Shang and her skill point costs, this is the person on the other side of that, fueling Su Shang's costs. So they're basically just gonna be pure basic attack spamming. Now, what do they get for that? Well, they actually bring a lot to the team for those basic attack spammers. So essentially preservation units, which Trailblazer Fire is, are actually the best supports because their light cones are very, very high utility. You can get light cones which increase their threat, which means that enemies are more likely to attack them and they're naturally bulky, or you can get light cones which just straight up reduce the whole amount of damage that your team takes, which is also exceptionally powerful. So just by virtue of being preservation, uh, they are going to be providing damage mitigation to the team, which is exceptional. But in addition to that, whenever the Trailblazer Fire takes any action, including an ultimate, they actually shield the entire team for a non-negligible amount. And in terms of an AoE fight, it adds up quick, and it is a really, really big deal. Now there's two endgame modes in Star Rail. There is the Forgotten Hall, where Trailblazer Fire is an absolute staple. Uh, we'll get into that in a second, but there is also the Simulated Universe. And Trailblazer Fire is, in my opinion, the best free-to-play unit for Simulated Universe, uh, as there is some incredibly busted interactions uh, with the preservation uh, buffs and boons that you get in that mode. Trailblazer Fire is absolutely the best unit to take advantage of those, and you can easily trivialize even the hardest simulated universe levels which are 15 or higher levels above your team uh, with Trailblazer Fire. Uh, I'm sure on launch of game everyone will realize this but unless it's nerfed it's going to be a free path for simulated universe and that is a big contributing factor of why this character is so good. Now let's talk about what is going on here in the Forgotten Hall with this character. So as I mentioned, any action is shields. Uh, now in a free to play account, you're only gonna have one healer and you need two healers for the Forgotten Hall. That's a bit of a problem, doesn't add up. But you can make up for this fact by using two shielders on your other team uh, instead of a healer. So you can use Trailblazer Fire as well as March 7th, which we'll get into here in a second, uh, to make up for that healing slot. Uh, so overall, that can be an approach and probably will be an approach for many free to play players. Uh, so they are an essential piece of your free to play team. And even after you get two healers, they're an incredible defense option uh, capable of shielding your entire team every basic attack which is basically free uh, and then in addition to that they also have a situational true taunt now many units in this game have what's called taunt value which increases their chance to get hit uh, but there's no other unit in the game which has a true taunt a true taunt essentially means that enemies must attack this unit so if you have an enemy on one life and the, uh, sorry an ally on one life and the enemies are all single target and you taunt with trailblazer of fire all the enemies will attack them them and that can be very very powerful in the right scenario and very very clutch uh, so overall trailers of fire is a solid a tier and i think that you could make an argument uh, for them being even higher uh, on a free-to-play tier list when you're not comparing them to five stars and uh, event banner units so obviously a very, very strong unit in my opinion. All right, next up, let's talk about another sustaining character here, March 7th, an A tier unit from me. Uh, so March 7th here is a fantastic character. In terms of shielding output, definitely nowhere near as strong as Trailblazer Fire. Trailblazer Fire has one of the highest shielding outputs in the game if you had a 100% efficiency on those shields, uh, but March can provide single target and situational shields. And those shields will increase the threat or the taunt value of the target, meaning she's an 
extra synergistic character uh, with some characters like Clara who wants to be hit. Uh, but in addition to that, she can also make it so that you can place that shield on either herself uh, to make herself the target, which is pretty good. She is a preservation unit, so she's naturally bulky. Uh, or you can place it on someone like Trailblazer of Fire, uh, who is also naturally bulky. You will be pairing them probably together. Uh, but overall, the shield is fantastic, and it's going to allow you to create essentially a tank on the fly uh, for you to go ahead and have all the enemies attack. And it's definitely going to be, as I mentioned, an essential piece of free-to-play Forgotten Hall teams with Trailblazer of Fire here. So she's going to be outstanding. But that's just one part of her kit. And we'll talk a little bit more about her in a second here. Uh, but her ultimate really is the reason you bring her. Her ultimate is going to be an AoE freeze. And it is definitely an ultimate which you'll have access to frequently, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, but an AoE freeze is essential for progressing in endgame uh, with that no healer team. Being able to slow the enemy down and stop them at critical junctures is really going to be essential. Now, what's cool about this freeze is you can scale the chance for it to be inflicted. If you get enough effect hit rate on March, you can get this chance to be incredibly high, uh, and you know, in some cases, very close to a guarantee against enemies which do not have effect hit resistance. Effect hit resistance is essentially uh, the opposite of increasing your chance to hit. So essentially it's a bit of a balancing act, uh, but with the right gear set, you can make it so that March can be an AoE freeze character. Combined with their shield, that can be quite powerful. Now, in addition to that, whenever March has an ally who is hit, who is shielded by her own or otherwise, she will counterattack and deal a little bit of ice damage, which does actually inflict break damage, but more importantly, gives her 10 energy. Now it's 10 in beta, I think this might be nerfed, uh, but this is exceptionally powerful. She is a character who generates a ton of energy, more so than many other characters. Uh, so she's gonna be able to use that ultimate far, far more frequently uh, than any other character uh, would or should be able to uh, with her position. So she's gonna be able to spam that ultimate and she's got the situational shields. Now the reason that she's not a S tier unit or anything like that uh, is that she's actually incredibly awkward to use uh, because her primary uh, value comes from her skill but she's a support so supports generally don't use their skill uh, and that means that she's going to have to take the position of one of your damage dealers or take points away from one of your damage dealers you're going to want to be using the shield pretty much every turn or every other turn to really protect your team so it's going to create a very very starved skill point team uh, unless you pair her with someone like Arlen uh, or with someone like Sample or Serval who is playing as a neutral character so while March 7th has a lot going in her Faber, uh, building teams around her effectively who do enough damage is going to be the challenge. All right, lastly, we have Natasha. Natasha is a A or B tier unit. She's going to go in A because she's the only other healer compared to Bailu, but she's substantially worse than Bailu, uh, an order of magnitude worse. Uh, but she does bring a cleanse. March also brings a cleanse, forgot to mention that, but she is a great cleanser as well. And cleansers are incredibly important in Star Rail, uh, especially in the early game throughout progression in the simulated universe specifically. There are abilities in Star Rail which just straight up immobilize enemy, uh, sorry, allies on your team. Uh, and and being immobilized means that you cannot deal damage and in some rare cases some of these ailments actually cause your allies to attack you and it's like a mind control effect and not having the ability to cleanse that and remove that at a moment's notice is incredibly uh, challenging to deal with there is also debuffs which make it so that your allies simply do not deal damage while they are debuffed so you definitely need access to cleansers uh, and as such natasha is a healer that you will bring over bailu in those scenarios meaning that she is quite valuable at least for now as she is the only healing cleanser are in the game. Now, in terms of her healing output, it's definitely a little bit on the low side, uh, but she is definitely not anything to scoff at. And as a free-to-play player, you'll be running her in pretty much every single team, uh, including uh, you know the Forgotten Hall and Simulated Universe. You'd be crazy not to. She's so powerful as a healer, uh, as a free-to-play player. And without heals, you're going to have a lot of issues unless you're running some crazy double shielding team, or you gain access to uh, like someone like Japard uh, or something along those lines. So an essential unit for free-to-play players and a really good one, and that cleanse is going to be clutch. In terms of upkeep, well, she generates a pretty good amount of skill points. Nothing crazy, uh, but she definitely does generate a pretty good and decent amount. But she's not going to be like a Bronya who generates a ridiculous amount. Okay, next up, we've got the three buffers or supporters here. Uh, we've got Asta. Asta up first. So Asta could go in either B or A. I'm going to put her in B tier because I think the other two supports are far above her. Uh, and we're going to talk about her in a second here because I think that we get a little bit of context here on why the other two are so good it'll give us a little bit more space to talk about Aster and why she's a little bit below so first up uh, Tin Young S tier so based on close beta 3 info she is absolutely ridiculous uh, she is a rival to even Bronya alone at Eidolon 0 without a light cone 
And the reason for that uh, is that she just has so much potential uh, to fix teams. Uh, you definitely should go and check out my Ting Young video if you haven't already, but the TLDR is that she's essentially a support which can double your main character's damage uh, for zero skill point cost. So she's essentially gonna function similar to Arlen uh, or like um, Sampo or Serval we talked about earlier. She doesn't require any skill points on your teams, but she provides a mammoth amount of buffs and damage. So you can essentially take your Sele or your Yang Ching or anyone and pair them with Tin Young and they will get all the skill points that they ever want and they'll also double their damage. Uh, this is something that even Bronya cannot achieve without having Eidolons or anything along those lines. Uh, so Tin Young is a standout character and an exceptional four star. If she isn't nerfed, she's probably the one character I would recommend everyone trying to get on their free to play account. She is insane. Uh, but that's enough about Tin Young. She basically stands on a section all on her own. Next up we have Pella. Uh, so Pella is a really, really good unit. She can be played as either a support uh, or she can be played as a damage dealer. As a damage dealer, she actually rivals even Himiko in terms of her AOE clearing potential. Not quite as high damage, but it's up there. Definitely not bad, especially when you get some Eidolons on it. Uh, but her real potential is gonna be as a support. So as a support, she actually provides quite a lot of interesting benefits. So first and foremost, she's a pretty quick character. So she's gonna be generating more uh, skill points than average. Uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, but in addition to that, she is pretty much the only debuffing support that free to play players gain access to. And debuffing enemies uh, is a lot more powerful than buffing allies in a lot of cases. And that's because enemies are quite slow and they're subject to be slowing, slowed even more. Uh, so if you take a really, really fast unit like Su Shang uh, and you applied three uh, Bronya ultimates to her, it would be six turns of Bronya ultimates. But we talked about it earlier, she gets 12 actions. So she's gonna only have a half of the uptime uh, for those buffs which is not so great. But Pella, Pella's ultimate, you can get a pretty high uptime with and it's debuffing the enemy. So if you can debuff the enemy for six turns and they only get six actions, that's 100% uptime. And now your Su Shang, who is incredibly fast, is happy to take advantage of that for her full rotation. So Pella has a bit of an advantage there over buffing characters. Now, someone like Ting Young actually doesn't have that problem either. When you go watch the video, you'll understand why. But Pella does solve that problem, and she's going to be very, very good in terms of pairing her with Sele uh, or someone like uh, Su Shang. So she's actually quite good. She's also Ice, which is a pretty hard kind of element to break with. Uh, traditionally, uh, March is not someone you're going to be basic attacking with often. Japar is a five star, and also March is a little bit awkward to use her break with. Uh, but Pella is an Ice unit who can be played as that DPS or as a support. So she has a lot of value there, at least for now, while we don't have those Ice units who are super accessible. And she's also got those debuffs, you know, so she's pretty good. If you're curious, against a level 90 enemy, which is the highest level in the game in Forgotten Hall, while you are level 80, her ultimate is going to be a 22% more damage multiplier while it is active. So take whatever damage you're dealing and multiply it by 22%, and that's kind of what you're going to be looking at there. In addition, in Pella's favor, she actually stacks favorably with additional units that shred defense. Uh, it actually is the only stat currently in the game which gets better the more of it you stack. Uh, so Pella and Silver Wolf will definitely be a combo, which I'm sure people will be experiencing experimenting with uh, and she's already good and I imagine she could be even better in the future. Now that we've talked about that, we can talk about Asta. So Asta is a unit who is conditional, unfortunately. Her primary buff, her increased damage buff from her charging stacks uh, is completely conditional on the enemy being vulnerable to fire or her spamming her skill quite frequently. Now, if we've learned anything, we've pretty much learned that we don't wanna spam our skill with our supports, unfortunately. We want them to generate skill points, not spend them. Uh, you know, you could play her as a neutral unit in place of one of your damaging units, uh, similar to how you play Teen Young or Sampo or Serval or Arlen, uh, but you know, that is definitely not looking to be the best numbers wise in terms of how we've seen it so far. Uh, so, you know, she's not the best in that role, but as a pure support, you know, she's not bad. She's just not going to be crazy. Now her ultimate who provides speed is a pretty interesting talking point. Overall, it's a massive damage multiplier under the perfect scenario where every character gets additional actions based on speed breakpoints. Now those speed breakpoints are all over the place. So it's pretty hard to actually understand exactly where they're going to be. Um, but, you know, assuming you get one or two extra turns, that that can be a pretty big damage multiplier. However, Asta's ultimate is incredibly difficult to time. 
Also, uh, it's going to depend highly on how fast the character already is, based on what we talked about earlier. If you only get three Astra Ultimates in a turn, which is seven seven cycles long, uh, you know that's only half the uptime on a character like Su Shang. Uh, so you're not going to get as much value as you are hoping for uh, on those Astra Ultimates. So she's just a little bit, in terms of my opinion, below all the other supports right now. Uh, but you could easily put her in A tier, and I think I'd feel pretty okay about it. But I think overall, in terms of what she brings, it's definitely less than Pella, and her future potential is less than Pella, and she also can't be played in any other way other than support right now from what i can see you could play her as a fire breaker uh, using her skill but that is entirely dependent on her being able to single target an enemy down who is weak to fire in those scenarios she will be quite good you can build her with break effect and she could be quite effective uh, but as uh, as the game goes, goes on and people scale and they get into the end game i expect to see asta phased out uh, in favor of other units on this list uh, like pella and other defensive options as well so that's going to be my list here, guys. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed, and this is kind of my overall final thoughts from playing Close Beta 3. I fully expect many, many things to change here. Uh, one quick update is I think Yangqing probably belongs in the A tier uh, based on his full team potential as a hyper carry. Uh, but, you know, as a singular unit, as we were assessing them here, he probably still stays in B tier. But he does have probably a very, very high ceiling in terms of his damage potential. But overall, that's going to be it, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed. And if you want more interesting deep dive content on every character with numbers to back it up definitely subscribe for more there's plenty of videos in the way hope you guys enjoyed until next time cheers